Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and in today's video we will be talking about INFJ and the ENFP relationship. And yeah, I've been dating an INFP for a long time now, and uh, I'm having a blast, I'm having a great time. And uh, in many ways, um, I think if you bring an ENFP into your life, um, you have to get ready for a lot of changes in your life, um, especially as an INFJ. Uh, I don't think that there is a perfect relationship for any personality type. There is no algorithm you should date this or that type, but there is um, different types are going to give you different things. And the question is right now, what do you need? Or actually not in such a short time frame, but what do you need to be happy as a person? What do you need to be who you are? What do you need to be the best version of yourself? That's the most important question. What is important right now? And I feel like... Uh, for me, uh, it was important that I got out of my comfort zone. And it is important that I still continue to go out of my comfort zone for me. Because I I um, really can get stuck in my own head at times. I have habits of being far too shy and uh, far too perfectionistic and uh, um, going waiting too long with everything I do and, um, and uh, being with an ENFP has really taught me that if you don't jump for a possibility it's gonna disappear if you don't take a chance it's gonna not gonna be there anymore um, and sometimes uh, all you need to do is spring to action all you need to do is actually get out there actually take a chance actually go into things that you're not familiar with yet because that's the only way you can learn something and uh, I don't know uh, in hindsight what I was waiting for back until then um, I didn't notice a few things starting to date an ENFP and the first thing was that I went from this sense where I tended to see the world as um, where I lived like a monk in a way. I, I feel like I lived like a monk for a lot of the last years. Uh, I had uh, very few attachments to anything, a few material attachments. To my, I had no attachments to where I live. I had no attachments to anything. Um, and um, as I started connecting with an ENFP, I started noticing... Uh, that suddenly I cared much more about myself and that was interesting because uh, up until that point I think I uh, was perfectly fine living under a rock with the bare minimum of everything um, while I slowly worked towards my passion but um, suddenly I started caring about happiness and having fun and enjoying the way there suddenly I started caring about uh, things more deeply and uh, the most surprising thing was that uh, I noticed that I started questioning myself a little more. I started questioning what I really wanted for myself and what I really needed to be happy. Because for an ENFP, I feel like everything is about intention. What is your intention? What is your motivation? What is the motivation behind what you do? And uh, they are so good at getting you to think a few times before you do something, before you just do. And I feel like at that point I was ready to just do something, but I didn't uh, think about why I wanted to do it. And uh, she really made me think about why I wanted to do it. She made me think about, ask some deep questions to myself. And she, he helped, she helped change my life path from uh, what I know now would have been a bad choice. Um, she made me explore my passion. She made me pursue my goals. She made me do what I love. So um, I feel really that she has been so beneficial in my life, but I also know that if I didn't love her, if I didn't care for her, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Uh, love is the most important thing. Uh, without it, uh, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna. You're not gonna have the energy. You're not gonna have the power to do it because change is hard. Uh, remaining the same is easy. You have to at some point, and I felt like for me it was a choice between comfort in nothingness or fear in everything. <laughs> I feel like that was the choice I had to make in a way. Um, and um, I do know that INFJs tend to you know, almost unilaterally describe ENFPs as inspirations. Uh, 
unintentionally so sometimes i think we tend to see them as inspiring even if they didn't know how or why or what inspired us exactly but just being in their presence is inspiring uh, for an INFJ, I feel like the idea is if an ENFP is like a supernova at the times at their best uh, when they have a lot of energy. Uh, for an INFJ, uh, being around that is like uh, absorbing. You get to absorb so many things. You get so many things to process and to synthesize and to cook together. Um, so that can be quite an amazing experience. Beyond that, I think that ENFPs are in many ways actors uh, i'm not saying they're not authentic they are definitely very authentic people but i know that enfps love a playful acting playful role play uh just going into different characters and different roles and playful banter playful exchanges and uh discussions um and uh i think that's perhaps one of the things that lured me in the most uh was that uh, multi-dimensionality of the ENFP in the sense where it felt like they had many nuances to them, they had many perspectives to them, many different qualities. Um, they were and seemed to possess everything at once <laughs> in some way, uh, like uh, a flower in many different colors. And uh, for an INFJ I feel like what we bring to the thing, to the table there is that we tend to always ask people why they do what they do. What is the drive of your character? What is the drive behind your role or what you're playing now? What is the intention behind everything? Yeah. And I don't mean intention as much as essence, I think. Like we are always trying to ask ourselves deeper personal questions, uh, interpersonal questions often of like, who are you and why are you that way? Um, and I think that's a question that the ENFPs need to start thinking about more. And I think that's what they need and what they get from being around an INFJ, that uh, understanding of why they do things and why they do things the way they do, because I don't know, um, sometimes I don't think they know themselves why they do things the way they do and why everything is happening. But uh, over time I'm feeling like I'm learning more and I'm understanding more and I'm getting more and more about how uh, um, she works. and. Uh, at the same time, I know that she will continue to surprise me, for sure. There will always be new things to learn. Um, I think that often uh, also what we bring as philosophers, in a way, is uh, that ability to simulate on um, different things, to envision ourselves together with that person in a longer perspective to envision ourselves and what's going to happen over time with something or how something is going to go INFJs have a great ability to envision and uh, to go into and see how something is going to happen in the future and um, I think that often uh, the ENFP can find this extremely helpful and enriching in the sense that well this can help them explore possibilities and theories that they wouldn't be able to do based on just the surface available options and information. Uh, it uh, brings We bring thing to, things to the table that I think ENFPs don't even know is possible. Uh, we uh, show resources in making decisions happen. We show um, this uh, ability to uh, resourcefulness in the making a dream come true because ENFPs have a lot of dreams I think ENFPs uh, I don't know have this uh, Disney style imagination and they can throw out impossible things seemingly impossible possibilities um, but often they do it just playfully they don't think it will happen they don't imagine it will happen but we can make it happen that's I think an INFJ's gift we can make the impossible happen in a way I don't know uh, ENFPs show us what the impossible is to explore and we go if we would explore it this is how we would do it so I love that exchange between an INFJ and an ENFP like um, how we both uh, explore the impossible or something absurd or strange I think uh, what brings us to the table of course is our shared interest our shared passion our shared motivations and um, a values-based level and an idea-based level, I think we can appear very alike to one another because, well, that drive 
that inspiration uh, is very similar. We definitely meet in the middle. We feel like uh, an inwards out version of one another. And uh, so what I can say is most important around an ENFP is truly to be yourself. And uh, I think that can be difficult because uh, sometimes it's about showing courage. Sometimes it's about showing strength. And sometimes it's about setting boundaries. And uh, sometimes it's about uh, truly listening, thinking. Um, it's really about, uh, in so many ways, uh, using your core functions to be there and to be present in, in uh, the relationship. Because um, there are a few myths about being an INFJ. For example, INFJs tend to think that, oh, I just need to think about it a little more. Uh, INFJs tell themselves, oh, I just need to think about it a little more before I make a decision. But that's just pulling away. That's a push-pull tactic uh, for an INFJ. Uh, introversion is not about pulling away to think. Introversion is about thinking and then showing what you are thinking, walking another person through your process, daring to walk another person through your process. As long as you push away, what you're doing is freezing your own process, freezing your own thoughts. Uh, I've gotten wise enough to know over the years that um, when I pull away to think, usually nothing tends to happen. I don't tend to get any wiser. I don't tend to get any better clue about what to do. Uh, it's only by sharing my process and sharing my thoughts that I can truly learn. Similarly, it comes down to um, going deeper and showing why you do things the way you do and why things happen the way they do and um, about walking the other person through who you are and uh, on a deeper level uh, showing your sensitive side in a way uh, letting the other person know when you uh, feel hurt rather than hiding it um, also about setting boundaries with feeling and judging and um, letting the other person know what you can do and how much you can do in making the other person's dreams possible because you really want to make the other person happy, you want to make the other person feel good, but you have to learn to set boundaries in uh, how much you can give uh, reasonably and in what time and what is possible for you. You have to have to set reasonable time frames here and uh, you have to balance. I also think uh, to uh, set boundaries on uh, what is possible for you and to think through carefully what is possible for you uh, so you don't promise things you can't keep or so you don't uh, end up disappointing uh, the ENFP. Uh, those are just my personal struggles as an INFJ in the ESFJ subtype and uh, I can understand definitely that for example INTP like INFJs are going to relate more to that kind of pulling away dynamic and the difficulty in sharing where me, for example, my biggest difficulty in a relationship that I've come to learn is asserting myself, my own needs, and setting boundaries for what I can and what I can't do. I think that's my biggest difficulty. Uh, so well, as an INFJ, what do you think is your biggest difficulty? What do you think um, you need to work on? And uh, what do you think uh, is the ideal relationship for you right now? Um, 